So I wanted just again to thank um, all of you for joining us uh, today, um, wherever you are in the world and whatever time it may be, hopefully it's not um, too late uh, for some of you. Um, so I wanted just to uh, quickly introduce myself. Um, my name is Lori Wong and I am a senior lecturer at the Courtauld Institute of Art. And I will let my colleague introduce herself as well. Hi everyone, I'm Sujata Megama, and I'm also a senior lecturer at the Courtauld Institute of Art. And I co-convene this um, main art history and conservation of Buddhist heritage with Laurie Wong. And both Sujata and I are gonna give um, um, a more detailed uh, introduction as we proceed through this um, webinar today. So um, today, this is the virtual open day. So we are here, of course, to talk about the MA in art history and conservation of Buddhist heritage at the Courtauld. Uh, and I'm going to just start with a um, short little film we have, um, just to give you um, a picture of, of the program. There is so much that needs to be studied and explored, and it's be a good starting point. And what I mostly like about this program is uh, the combination of uh, Buddhist art history and uh, conservation. It was a lot of brilliant students from all over the world, which is another great thing to be here. There is so much that needs to be studied and explored, and it's be a good starting point. And what I most like about this program is uh, the combination of uh, Buddhist art history and uh, conservation. <laughs> It draws a lot of brilliant students from all over the world, which is another great factor to be here. Great. So um, we're we're now going to move into uh, a brief presentation, and we want to leave enough time for questions. Um, so I wanted to just begin um, to give you a bit of background about this program. Um, so again, this is at the Courtauld Institute of Art in London. And what I show here are the two locations of uh, the Courtauld. Uh, so on the left, you see Somerset House. And then on the right, you will see um, Vernon Square. We're currently in two different locations because of a um, a, a major renovation project that's happening at Somerset House. Um, but we're in these two beautiful historic buildings. Um, Somerset House on the left, of course, is the home of the Courtauld Galleries, um, and these are world-renowned art collection. Um, and so courses for our program actually take place at both of these locations. So they're about 30 minutes apart, but it's really a great opportunity when you're studying in London to um, be situated in such um, wonderful historic buildings. Um, and now I wanted to give a brief explanation about how this program, which is a very unique program, the program is focused on Buddhist heritage, but it is interdisciplinary. So it looks at it from two different disciplines, art history, which Sudata is uh, teaching and conservation, which I teach. Um, and there's a reason why this program first began. And um, the history of the Courtauld goes back uh, to the early 1930s. 
And um, there has been um, a strong presence between the two disciplines at the Courtauld, both art history and conservation. Um, and the conservation department actually encompasses um, three programs. It encompasses a program, which is the conservation of easel paintings. It also has a program that focuses on the conservation of wall paintings. And then the program that Sujata and I teach on um, is the conservation and art history of Buddhist heritage. So it is three these three programs that sit within the conservation department. Um, and the reason why um, this particular program started is because I show here um, the site of the Mogao Grottoes in Dunhuang. Um, and this is a um, Buddhist cave temple site situated along the ancient Silk Road. And this is a site that the Quartal worked at for many years. Um, and this was where, in particular, the conservation of wall paintings program was involved. Um, so it's through this uh, collaborative um, project with the Dunhuang Academy um, that really started um, the Quartal thinking about the issues surrounding Buddhist heritage. Uh, this is just one of the uh, incredible cave temples that you have at the site of Dunhuang. Um, and the work that was undertaken by the Courtauld was to study the wall paintings and the painted statues uh, and to understand conservation issues, issues of deterioration, such as the flaking that you see in the wall paintings here, um, and also other challenges that the site faces. Um, and the Courtauld also worked at other um, sites, programs are very international in nature. So they worked um, at Tango Monastery in Bhutan. Um, and this was, uh, this shows uh, just the beautiful setting of this uh, monastery. And then a couple of um, students that were working, again, this was focused on the conservation of wall paintings. So you see two students undertaking photographic documentation of the wall paintings um, in Bhutan. So this is just to give you kind of a, a bit of background um, because the Courtauld has this um, long history of working in Asia um, and working on cultural heritage. And so in 2013, it was, um, it was an opportunity um, supported by the Robert H. N. Ho Family Foundation to uh, start this program, which would be focused on Buddhist heritage in particular. Um, and so the Courtauld thought a lot about this, um, about what one should be teaching, because this program is a year-long MA program, and it is um, it is not like the other two programs that are practical conservation programs that are three years in length. Uh, this program is just a 12-month MA, um, but it is much more focused on um, the theory and the ethics uh, surrounding the study and the preservation of Buddhist heritage. And so this here just is a, a word cloud, um, because when you start to think about these issues, uh, so many things come to mind, uh, things like um, um, heritage and culture and um, all these issues that surround the complexities of dealing with Buddhist heritage. And so this program really tries to um, look at all of these issues and to um, expose our students to these um, main issues that are impacting um, the study and preservation of Buddhist heritage. Um, and we know that it's very um, difficult to find a program um, that focuses specifically on these issues. Uh, so we really commend all of you for coming today and um, for finding this unique program. Um, and what I think this program's strength is, is that it is um, interdisciplinary. Uh, I think a lot of programs talk about the need for interdisciplinary program. This program actually is co-taught. Um, so you really have um, expertise coming from two different disciplines, as well as bringing in uh, experts uh, from other fields. So, I mean, though this program is focused on, on Buddhism, it uses um, Buddhism as a, as a consistent way to think about the um, issues surrounding cultural heritage. Um, I show this slide because um, it's important for us to acknowledge just how important the study of religious heritage is more broadly. Um, and our, our course also touches upon other religions as well, um, because what we talk about is uh, very much applicable to uh, religions as a whole. So this is um, a UNESCO initiative. And the reason we show this is because um, 
um, religious heritage just makes up a huge uh, percentage of, of heritage sites worldwide. So this is a very pressing issue um, and many organizations and institutions are, are thinking about these issues. Um, and we also think about the core competencies, um, that's what we're calling them, for um, our students. Uh, for all of you who are prospective students, um, we want to know, we want to understand, you know, what is happening in the field, what are the current issues, and what role does conservation education, um, art history as well? What, what role should we be um, playing in terms of um, equipping all of you um, for the job market, for your next um, your next step, um, and I think all of you probably have a, a, a deep interest in cultural heritage, in, in in art history, and in conservation, and in Buddhist, Buddhist heritage in particular. So there is this um, um, thinking that is happening here about how um, what we teach is actually going to be um, applicable um, to real world situations. So I just um, I I. I'm going to just give a brief introduction um, about myself, and I wanted to do it through um, the site of, of Dunhuang, just, um, just to give you, again, this kind of sense of real world application. And then I'm going to hand over to Sujata, who will talk about the course in more detail. Um, so I, um, I trained as a wall painting conservator, and I actually am an alumna of the Courtauld. Uh, so I studied on the conservation of wall paintings program. And I had the great fortune to um, work as a conservator uh, with the Dunhuang Academy um, at the Mogao Grottoes. Um, so this was kind of my first exposure to understanding issues um, at Buddhist heritage sites. Um, but the work of a conservator is not just about um, hands-on remedial interventions. It's also about understanding um, issues of preventive conservation. Um, so this is about dealing with um, environmental control and understanding uh, causes of deterioration. Um, so these are all things that we discuss um, on this course. And also it's about understanding threats and risks. Uh, this is a um, core uh, part of, of of the conservation side of this program is understanding the threats that Buddhist heritage sites uh, face. And this is just showing one of the um, um, terrible dust storms <laughs> that you can encounter. Um, and also um, understanding about solutions and about how one must work in a very interdisciplinary setting. So though I trained as a conservator, um, I often have to work with people in other fields. So working with art historians like Sujata or also working in the case of the images that you see here, um, when you're looking at sand control measures, uh, such as the Mogao Grottoes, which is situated in the desert, it is about uh, working with um, experts in other fields, um, such as engineering, um, who can um, design such things as this windbreak fence that you see here. Um, and then it's also about having a, an awareness of um, such things as um, the role science plays in, in all of this and how it can contribute to um, conservation. And this is um, an image that shows the site of the Mogao Grottoes in, under um, rain, uh, which is unusual because it's situated in the desert. Um, but this is a, um, a growing concern is um, the uh, issue of climate change and how climate change, again, as another threat, um, is something that Buddhist heritage sites face. Um, and this shows another image of um, a flash flood that uh, can occur. Um, this is also at the site of Dunhuang. Um, so thinking about issues of emer emergency preparedness. Um, but it's not just about um, dealing with the physical and tangible side of heritage. Um, when we think about Buddhist heritage, um, we also need to be aware of the social and cultural contexts. Um, this shows uh, the site of Dunhuang again during Buddha's birthday, uh, and you can see how the community comes out. Um, you can see how people um, worship by burning incense. So we very much are also thinking about Buddhist heritage, not just as tangible, but also the intangible side of things. 
um, and this is very important to us that um, we think of um, heritage broadly, that we take this holistic approach. Um, there are other issues that uh, we deal, we talk about such as um, site and visitor management. A lot of heritage sites are uh, the focus of um, sustainable tourism and mass tourism. So this is an important aspect that one who is interested in working on Buddhist heritage must think about. Um, and then our uh, the way we define conservation is also um, done so um, very broadly, as I've been already um, referring to, that we don't just think of conservation as a, a hands-on um, treatment. We also think of things like, um, you know, visitor, um, the visitor management that I mentioned, also use and um, maintaining religious use, um, and also things like advocacy and awareness um, are also uh, very much considered as part of um, conservation activities. Uh, and then I show this image here, um, which is actually, it was a collaboration between um, the Dunhuang Academy, the Getty Conservation Institute, which is based in Los Angeles, and the Courtauld Institute of Art. And this was an in initiative um, about conservation education. Um, so we um, feel very strongly at the Courtauld about having um, these collaborative partnerships with um, organizations um, that, that care for and are responsible for the management of Buddhist heritage sites. So this program is very international in, in scope. Um, and with that, I'm just going to hand over to Sujata to now talk about the actual program. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you for situating our program in a much broader context, um, especially um, in relation to world heritage um, issues and how it um, contributes in different ways. Um, so I'm going to take you through the way we've um, structured this program. As Laurie mentioned um, earlier, it's a very interdisciplinary program. Um, uh, from the get-go, we've got two um, experts in two different fields, um, teaching um, students um, uh, in the autumn semester. We've got two separate modules. One is... Um, a module conservation in a Buddhist context taught by Laurie. Um, and some of the issues that she spoke about uh, certainly um, come through in that uh, particular module. Um, I teach a module um, on art of the Buddhist worlds, uh, bringing in my experiences um, teaching um, religious art, Buddhist art um, um, in um, Asia. And um, we'll sort of get into a little bit more detail as we go along um, in our next few slides, but I just want to go through the structure again. Um, in, even though these two modules are separate um, in the autumn semester, we do come together um, uh, for uh, certain sessions um, where we think about shared themes. Um, for example, tomorrow we are going to be visiting a Buddhist temple together. Uh, and thinking about um, not only the uh, mural paintings at this beautiful um, Thai temple in Wimbledon in London, but also thinking about uh, the site as a living um, heritage site where um, monks reside and use the space where devotees come in um, every day and worship. Um, um, and um, there are moments like this throughout the semester where we uh, come together um, and we think about certain issues from an art historical perspective, but also from the perspective of conservation. In the spring semester, we um, co-teach and we have a um, class on um, art history and the conservation of Buddhist heritage, where we raise a number of shared issues, um, shared methodologies in the two fields to um, get the students and to get ourselves to really um, have a dialogue uh, about um, uh, important issues surrounding Buddhist heritage and, and think more um, in an uh, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary way. And the module three also prepares us 
for the upcoming study trip, which is um, a nearly two week long study trip um, to um, Asia to um, to explore, to experience uh, Buddhist heritage um, up close, uh, especially living Buddhist heritage, but also um, to think about um, some of the issues that uh, Laurie brought up earlier uh, surrounding um, um, the preservation of um, um, heritage sites. And we also get a chance to meet professionals on the ground, whether they are art historians, conservators, archaeologists, um, or um, heritage management uh, professionals. We, um, we will see a few slides um, about our uh, study trip in May, and then uh, maybe I'll explain a little bit further. And then the program culminates with um, a research dissertation, a research project of your choice, of course, uh, you will be guided through that whole process by both um, Laurie and myself. And you have about, I believe, three months and or more to work on this um, particular summer uh, research dissertation project, which is a 10,000 word um, dissertation. Um, shall we move on to the next slide, Laurie? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I will um, introduce the first module. Um, so I teach, again, this is in the fall, and this is one of the foundational modules. Um, I teach the conservation in a Buddhist context. And the what we're trying to do in this course is to um, present to all of you, to the, the students, um, an understanding of conservation as a modern discipline. Um, and this really focuses on um, the ethics, the theory uh, of conservation practice. Um, but again, it looks at, at conservation, as I mentioned already, as a, a holistic uh, um, endeavor. Um, so it really tries to expose the students to um, how conservation is currently practiced at um, places uh, around the world. And we have a lot of um, site visits that we do to conservation labs um, and studios uh, here in London, um, but we also go further afield um, and we, we engage with um, conservation professionals um, and we also bring in guest um, guest speakers that are coming from all around the world and that are working on um, heritage sites. And over the past year, we've had conservators from, um, from um, Myanmar, from um, India, from um, China, um, all come and speak um, to our students. So this is really um, the goal of this program is to give you as much exposure as possible um, but again, we're not just thinking about um, the modern discipline of conservation, but we're also thinking about how that um, intersects with, um, sometimes conflicts with um, traditional knowledge systems and also um, forms of merit making. Um, because again, our focus is on Buddhist heritage uh, and this program needs to um, engage with um, not just modern practices, but also to understand how um, Buddhist heritage has um, evolved over time. Um, and this is an important aspect of our work. Um, and the goal here is to um, equip our students with an understanding of, of decision-making um, from the conservation point of view um, in a Buddhist context. How do, how are decisions made? Um, what are the socio-political socio um, contexts that influence decision-making? Um, who are the stakeholders that are involved. Um, and so this is really what um, our goal, my goal in this program is, is to introduce you to this um, in the first uh, semester. So now I'm gonna, oh, and, and um, just to touch upon some of the resources that we use, um, we are very much looking at um, current thinking on this topic and to look at what um, institutions that work on cultural heritage, um, such as, um, you know, um, I already mentioned UNESCO, but uh, organizations like um, ECROM, um, ECOMOS that are also thinking about um, 
religious heritage, conserving religious heritage, but also Asian heritage and Asian Buddhist heritage in particular. So I just show some examples of some of the some of the resources that exist and that the course um, will use and also build upon in in our teaching. Thank you, Laurie. Um, so this is the course that I teach um, alongside um, Laurie's, um, while well, Laurie's teaching her once, um, so students take two modules in their first semester, um, sort of getting the foundation um, in, in both disciplines. Um, we've um, noticed that not everyone who comes to the program uh, would be trained in art history or would have a bachelor's degree in art history. So we really start with um, the basic skills, learning the basic methodologies within the field of art history in this particular course. Um, and it also um, it, uh, is, is sort of framed in this very sort of broad um, manner so that we have a chance to dip into the various um, Buddhist art worlds. Um, I um, have been trained in Asian art history um, and I uh, have, of course, lived and um, worked in South Asia, Southeast Asia and East Asia. And most recently, I moved um, to London um, last year from Singapore. I was teaching for about 10 years, um, uh, teaching uh, Asian art history and researching um, religious um, art. And um, so I've certainly bring those experiences into this um a particular in the way I structure this particular um, course. And Laurie, if we can go to some of the other slides, I think they show that we do a number of field trips, as Laurie mentioned, to all the amazing museums and galleries here in London. We um, do have, um, we have st I've structured this particular uh, module in such a way that students get a chance to in, uh, experience um, uh, uh, a session where they choose um, an object from either the Victoria and Albert Museum or the British Museum and um, do research and present about it at the um, museum itself, um, sort of giving them a very, um, uh, a very sort of real, close to real, real life experience, uh, something that you might end up doing if you're working for a museum. We also visit the amazing uh, libraries um, that not only have books, but have other fantastic collections, um, manuscripts, uh, photographs, paintings. Um, and we also go to temples in um, London. Um, and as Laurie mentioned, even though the uh, program is uh, focused on Buddhist heritage, we do take into account that Buddhist art, Buddhist heritage, exists alongside um, other religions. So we also um, uh, visit other um, sacred um, sites as well. And um, this is, of course, in preparation um, uh, for our longer field trip, which takes place in um, early May. And I believe we have a few slides from our summer trip, but and these are slides, I guess, um, that Laurie was mentioning earlier. These are some field trips that we took um, uh, during our module three when we tried to when we tried to bring art history and uh, conservation together, and we had the opportunity to do these um, visits to um, conservation labs at the British Museum and also at the Cambridge Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology, where students had a chance to um, have this hands-on experience uh, looking very closely at um, objects or handling objects. Um, and I think we have some images from our field trip, our study trip to Sri Lanka. Um, every year the study trip um, changes and we aren't yet sure where we will go next summer, but we are in the process of making that decision. And these um, photographs show you that um, we not only visited World Heritage Sites, um, like the one, the image on the left is from the World Heritage Site of Polonara, but we also um, visited smaller temples. Um, um, I think it's maybe in the next slide, which are not um, listed 
as uh, well heritage sites, but are um, as important. Um, it sort of speaks to some of those issues that uh, Laurie mentioned earlier, um, the various types of challenges that Buddhist temples um, face. And we also um, had, you know, different workshops um, about conservation, on art history, we had a chance to meet um, and uh, talk with Buddhist monks. Um, and here, there's a slide here on the left-hand side uh, of a, a Buddhist monk showing us how to write on a palm leaf manuscript at a site where the Tripitaka is supposed to have been first written down um, in Sri Lanka. And some of the next slides show us visiting uh, actual active um, conservation um, site at a temple. Um, looking at uh, temple collections, um, we, we, it's not just only museums that um, collect, but temples collect as well. And we had the uh, opportunity to visit such uh, a, temp a site that had a fascinating collection of palm leaf manuscripts, um, textiles. Um, we also um, visited um, numerous museums, but we also had a chance to visit a temple museum. And um, these are some of the different spaces that um, we hope that students can um, experience. Um, so we, we, you know, learning doesn't only happen in the classroom. There's a lot of learning that happens uh, during the field trips that we take place in the fall semester and in the spring semester um, outside the classroom, but also um, during the field trip um, uh, to Asia, the study trip to Asia. So I think that those are some of the final slides. And then we also, um, this year, we had the opportunity to do, um, take our students to the UK Association of Buddhist Studies, the annual conference in um, St. Andrews in June of this year, where some of our students um, had a chance to present their research um, in a student um, panel and um, we were very excited that our students had a chance to do this, giving them a taste of what um, uh, you know research and academic life um, is like. Um, so um, again, um, they um, have these different opportunities um, outside the classroom. They were able to also see um, a number of uh, rituals that the Tashi Lumpur monks um, performed at this uh, venue. And um, we were very fortunate to uh, have um, been able to um, uh, see this, experience it, and then also speak with the monks and find out more about um, these rituals. And as you can see, this uh, particular program um, is not simply about um, uh, learning only in the classroom or learning only from text. But as uh, Laurie also mentioned earlier, we try our best to engage with uh, different experts. And those experts aren't always university professors or curators, but can also be Buddhist monks and nuns. And we're very keen to also uh, collaborate with religious communities and um, learn from re religious communities and collaborate um, with them as well in um, this uh, journey. And um, I, yeah, we mostly have international students. So we do have a few social activities. Um, this is a Lunar New Year tea party that uh, we all organized. Um, which was uh, great fun, I believe, for everybody. And um, we have, um, you know, every time there's um, a, a speaker or we have a, a scholar going through London, we, we do try our best to um, uh, create these opportunities for our students to meet. We have organized a lecture series in the spring in preparation for our study trip to Sri Lanka around the theme of uh, Sri Lanka's uh, Buddhist heritage. And we had uh, four speakers and here's a slide of one of the speakers having um, tea with our students. Um, so there is of course that um, uh, social element as well. Um, and, um, and now we are going to turn it over to Taka 
who will talk to us about admissions. And if you have any questions, please do um, uh, put it in the Q&A. Um, there should be a little icon at the very bottom of this Zoom screen um, and we'll answer your questions. Hi, um, thank you very much, Jada and Nori. Um, so um, my name's Taka and I'm the admissions officer at the Courtauld. Um, I mainly work with um, postgraduate applications. So if you've got any questions and if you email um, PG admissions email address, um, it's likely I'm going to be the one who answers the question. Um, so I'm just going to um, go through um, sort of information about admissions quickly. So um, our applications are not yet open, um, and, but we are planning to open applications hopefully next week. Um, but um, I'm just going to say, um, but, but applications are going to be um, going to be open um, in late November, hopefully next week. Um, application deadline um, and will be 26th of January 2024. So you've got plenty of time to prepare. Um, and one thing just that I'm going to let you know is that we won't start um, assessing your applications um, until the deadline is passed. So it doesn't really matter if you submit your application now or in January. So you might as well just spend your time um, and just work on your application and submit near the deadline in January. Um, so what you need to submit is an um, official um, academic transcript. And um, it's a transcript that says um, grades and modules you've taken and, and the degree, what sort of degree you have actually obtained. Um, if you are currently studying, um, you can submit um, interim um, um, transcript. And then in summer, after your graduation, uh, you'd be required to submit your final academic transcript. Um, if um, applicable, um, if English is not your first language, um, we ask um, proof of your English language test results. Um, we, um, we accept two um, English tests. Um, one is IELTS and one is Cambridge English test. Um, Details are actually on our website, so if you're not 100% sure, um, please have a look at our website, or you can simply email me. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna write my um, email address later. Um, and a CV, um, it's it can be any kind of CV. Um, it gives us a bit of insight about you. Um, the the sort of things we can't um sort of know from your application or from your um transcript. Um, for example, um, any sort of you know volunteer activities or sort of um outside of academics of um activities, um, that would actually help us to understand you as a person a little bit more. So um, please do submit your CV, um, passport. And the also passport style ID photo. Um, this ID photo is going to be used for your student card. Uh, so please choose a good one. Um, it's normally without sort of um, background and without other people in present. And uh, so just basically like just a, your um, face photo. Um, I'm going to talk about funding a little bit um, briefly. Um, so funding, um, we got um, we got mainly we've got two options. Uh, one is court order scholarships. Um, applications open in late spring. Um, all offer holders are eligible to apply, and we will send a no notification email when applications are open. Um, you will receive the outcome before you have to make a decision by paying deposit in May. Um, last year, nearly half of enrollment students have been awarded a scholarship for this program. Scholarship amounts um, do vary, and uh, so it kind of changes every year. Um, but um, on average, it was around £7,000 to support your tuition fees. Um, if you are eligible, um, you can apply for a loan from, um, from the um, UK government. 
Um, it's called a master's loan, um, and the students can receive a loan of um, £12,167. And this funding can be used uh, to pay your tuition fees or to support your living expenses. Um, this funding, uh, this fund will be paid into your personal bank account, um, not through us. So um, this is the difference between the sort of undergraduate um, loan and the postgraduate loan. Um, it would be paid directly to you. So it would be up to you to decide um, what um, you'd like to actually use that loan for. Um, once you're enrolled, um, we've got a um, little um, fund called Hardship Funds. Um, this is the, um, if you're eligible, um, you can apply for a hardship fund once your enrolment is complete. Um, awards of up to £1,000 can be made from the hardship fund. Normally, finance, uh, financial report, uh, sorry, so financial support um, is in the £400 to £600 range. Um, the hardship fund is limited, so once all the funds have been allocated to students, the hardship fund will close for the academic academic year, and this fund cannot be used to pay tuition fees. Um, so this fund can be used for living expenses, paying rent, uh, to buy food, um, to sort of overcome sort of hardship you are experiencing. Um, so I'm just going to talk briefly about accommodation. Um, so we've got um, accommodations um, for postgraduate students. Mainly, we've got um, University of London um, accommodations, um, which um, is called intercollegiate halls. They are uh, mainly um, uh, um, located around central London, um, not too far from Somerset House. Um, and then um, it's quite a short um, um, tube journey, which is the underground um, journey to Vernon Square, or you can just get a bus um, and it would take about um, 15 to 20 minutes on the bus. Uh, even if you walk, um, you can probably just, um, it's going to take about 30 to 30 to 45 minutes, I think. Um, so University of London intercollegiate halls are mainly for international students who have never studied or lived in the UK before. Um, since um, we, we'd like to actually support international students um, who, who just um, haven't actually been here in the UK and who's never lived here. So who don't um, who don't quite know how to start um, looking at uh, renting accommodation and stuff like that. Um, so that's the sort of brief information from me. Um, and just back to Laurie and Sajata. Thank you. Well, we do have um, some ways to keep in touch with us. And you see our um, email contact and the way to contact Taka is the PG admissions at courtold.ac.uk. Um, but this is the time when we encourage you to ask us any questions you have. We're happy to answer your questions. So I will, um, while people are uh, maybe thinking of questions, um, some questions that we often uh, receive are asking about um, prior degrees, um, like did you have to study art history or um, something in your undergraduate degree? Are there any requirements? Um, and for this program, there are no requirements other than an undergraduate degree. Um, and our students, both um, in the current uh, cohort of students and in the previous one, came from a, a wide range of um, different subjects. So we had students who studied um, art history, but we also had students who studied engineering, um, um, economics, um, so um, English. Uh, so there's really a wide range of 
um, different backgrounds that students have. And um, we encourage people to apply because um, this is, again, a very interdisciplinary program. So um, there is often a relationship with your prior degree with what you're going to be uh, learning and studying. Um, oh, there's a question. So one of the questions we have is conservation of Buddhist art in Japan taught as part of the curriculum. So we uh, do, of course, cover Japanese art history um, as um, part of the arts of um, the, the module two art of uh, Buddhist worlds, um, but as you can imagine, um, we, we could just spend an entire semester, 13 weeks, just only studying Japanese art. There's so much to study. So um, we we really um, try our best to dip into these different um, um, uh, Buddhist visual traditions through a very thematic um, um, perspective after sort of the initial foundation of looking at um, um, sort of the establishment of Buddhist art in um, India. And um, uh, what, what students have done is to, if they have a deep interest in, um, let's say on the Silk Road or um, this, you know, with the current cohort, we have a student who's very interested in Japanese art, then they would um, choose to study um uh whatever their interest is uh, either through the uh, essay that um they're writing for that uh, particular module uh and um uh, i'm thinking of an example that happened this uh, semester which perhaps uh kind of speaks to what um the question is about um we've had a student who uh, chose a fantastic object, object of the British Museum from um, inspired um, by a famous um, Japanese um, Buddhist sculpture, the Kudara Kanon, and the student uh, presented about this object at the British Museum in week five, um, and there were such interesting issues, um, not only art historically, but um, in, in, in the field of conservation, that this student was able to explore that in Laurie's module as uh, part of the essay. And it was so rewarding yesterday for me to hear what this student has done um, with that particular object and how that student's helping us think about uh, issues of replicas and copies in a Japanese context and in a museum context. And um, so there, there are opportunities um, to explore um, one's passion, one's interest um, in, in these uh, modules. And of course, there's the dissertation, the 10,000 word dissertation as well, if you want to take it further. Laura, do you want to add to that? Um, no, I mean, I think that covers it. I mean, just that we do, um, again, try to expose uh, students to um, both art history uh, and conservation in um, you know as many countries um, as we can. So um, you know from Japan we we um, we have colleagues who are conservators um, based in Japan who have um, you know lectured for us last year. So there is that connection as well. Um, so though though we don't focus specifically on one country. I think it's um, actually richer in that we are able to expose you to um, what's happening, you know, all over the Buddhist world.
Um, I think one other thing I would suggest is, um, you know, I know it's sometimes difficult on the spot to come up with questions, um, but we have the core told also has um, a program, I believe, where you can talk to current students, uh, students who are actually, um, you know, on the course. So if that is something that is of interest, I would um, suggest that you get in touch uh, and we can um, connect you with a current student. You can also always contact me and Laurie if you have any questions um, about the application process or the program itself, and we would be happy to, um, you know, get back to you on those questions. Yeah. And um, same for me. And um, so my email address is um, down there on the slide. Um, any questions, um, please feel free to just uh, come and contact me. Um, I'm very happy to answer any questions. And um, on that note, um, would you like to say goodbye? Or would you like to wait um, a couple of minutes for more questions or? Um, I think. I think, I mean, this is being recorded. So um, I think we can, um, I, I just put up this slide, which is just also to remind you that you can look on our website for more information about the program as well. Um, and again, I include the link down below. And I think uh, we encourage you to um, get in touch with us. So I think on that note, we will just say um, thank you. Um, and uh, we hope to hear from you. Thank you for joining us today. And have a good day.